you at least stopping by. I don't know how long you'll be able to stay, but I was trying to get all of my little bits and pieces cut out here, of course. I'm so excited to have this set, and I'm trying to, uh, of course, create something that will coordinate with the beehive that I had shared in the group over at uh, the Tonic Studios group. Uh, my husband was very pleased with uh, this set because it's just so very um, near and dear to our hearts to have something that represents bees. Uh, so I'm super excited about that. And I've been playing around with another set, so I'm not finished with it yet. But this is going to be much more in a mixed media style. Awesome. And uh, this lid is the same, of course, uh, the outer construction is the same. What I did differently was the inside so that instead of having tiers like this one, which if... Uh, anyone else re-watches the video um, this has three different boxes then at least now I can go ahead and apply or, or put in my little jar which is actually quite large <laughs> it's quite a bit of honey there even though it may not may not look like it in the video but I had shared this before this is from our um, bees uh, that we keep and God willing, this summer, I hope that we can have some more. Uh, the weather has been kind of back and forth, so I'm very hopeful that our bees are in good health. If not, we will be splitting the hive, which means that it's a lot of work for the bees. So we may not have a, an actual honey harvest, but then that just means that the following year we will. And that's something that I'm looking forward to. So in any case um thank you so much I, I truly appreciate it it's of course you know everyone's take on these crafty items is a little slightly different depending on their taste um i think they're all beautiful of course uh, but it's um it's something that i had a lot of fun with and of course adding my little bit of glitter because that's just something that i like um and it'll match my living room so i have a room in our home um, that has uh, quite a bit of uh, bee related uh, decor and I, I will keep adding to it at the moment I'm actually doing some painting um, among other things of course <laughs> and uh, that'll be in my kitchen and that's gonna have some bees incorporated into it as well because it just makes sense to do that and um, and because if I can paint it to look the way that I want it to, then why not? <laughs> uh, and I, it won't be um, it won't be childlike. It, um, uh, of course, everything that I paint is, has a little bit of whimsy in it, but it'll just be fun. Um, something that I can look at every day, and will inspire me to just be creative in everything that I do, which is something that I aspire to do, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, so I will see. I'm, I'm six minutes in here. I hope some other people join me today. Um, I'm going to continue on here, just uh, separating these items with the little flowers. I've got a little stash in the corner, which is where I'm aiming with that for now. But of course, I'm going to start applying the adhesive first to these pieces. And I still have one little sign there that I need to cut out, but um, I'm really happy that these come with instructions that are easy to follow and all that good stuff. Um, but I'm going to, I think, start here with the basics and then I'll do all the layering. So I'm going to set aside the actual dies and just follow the diagram. Why not? I'm going to be using, just for the sake of this live video, some double-sided adhesive tape here because I see where this is going and I'm pretty sure I know if I can predict anything of 3D makes um, is that this is going to be the bars it's looking like. I'm going to start there. <clears throat> and then 
I'll do the same over here for the smaller ones. And I think, oh, actually, I think I cut out two and I only needed one, but hey, it's better to be prepared um, with more if necessary. And then these little guys I know are gonna be part of the wheel, but I think for this, let's see here. This is wrap around the circumference of your die cuts and glue your tabs up to the outside face of this first wheel die cut with your second wheel huh so it says to glue this to the outside face okay i guess i'll get there in a minute wanted to apply some adhesive first but we'll see how that works i'm going to first do these little folds and continue on here there was someone else who was going to join us as well and i'm surprised she's not here yet but i'm going to double check here no nope. well this might be one of those videos that people watch later on and if that's the case that's okay as well I'm going to use my score tool here because I am using Tonic Studio's heavy card stock and I'm going to want to make sure those folds are nice and crisp without ripping the paper. I'm just going to burnish that first. There we are. Hi Beverly, thank you for being here darling. I'm having a quiet morning here. Everything outside is covered in ice and it is just even scary to look out the window. Um, so I decided to go ahead and come by with this adorable set, get myself kind of looking forward to those spring days when we have everything <laughs> blooming outside, um, warmer weather and all that good stuff. So. Oh yes, I remember that. Oh, uh, trust me, Leo. I'm, I've done every mistake under the sun. I've done it, which is, in my opinion, just um, a good way to just remain humble. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> so I'm okay with that. <laughs> because that's how you learn. And you go, oh yeah, I'm human. And I make mistakes. And that's how it goes. <laughs> and you can practice grace toward yourself and say, you know what? That's uh, next time I, I won't do that. <laughs> like I told my kids, if anything, you can learn what not to do. Just kind of like the Berenstein Bear books, you know. Um, all right. So now that I have those, I think I'm just going to go ahead and. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do this portion. It looks like this is going to be uh, closed off anyway. And I hope that this is visible. I'm, in the video, from my point of view, it looks clear. Uh, I do have another ring light, but I'm abstaining from using it because I find that it's a bit too much sometimes during the daytime. Um, okay, for these little tabs here, I think if my glue gun is awake, I might just do that. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do a little touch of hot glue there. And um, another bit here. And I know I'm a little bit brave with hot glue, but I'm just so used to using it that I kind of have, uh, in Spanish we say, estoy cura de espantos, which means I am healed of fear. <laughs> and I, I know that's not a good translation in English, but that just means I'm, I'm no longer afraid of it. Um, Okay, so I'm going to follow this through. I'm thinking that this would be wonderful to support with a little paper straw inside so that it's nice and sturdy. Um, I happen to have some here, and I already closed that one, but I could reopen it. I'm thinking that would be a good idea, yes. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to cut these down. 
just because these are sturdy in and of itself so for 3d makes this is something i like to do to ensure that there's no warping although this paper is nice and strong but let me just eyeball this real quick um that's just a little something something oh and i just flew around my room i made a helicopter okay i'm gonna reopen this right quick and i'm gonna do the same for both sides and i'm gonna try to not make this piece fly away and this is complete i mean it's not necessary but it's just a little tip of my own here why not if you can reinforce your makes then um it's just a little little tidbit there this can be a little bit smaller Okay, so to close this off, I'll apply my little dab of glue. I'm going to press on that. And then stick my little paper straw in there. Close that off as well. I wonder where my crafty peeps are today. I think everyone's napping. <laughs> Uh, although this is kind of early for a video as well here in the U.S. Sometimes in the afternoon it's a little bit better, but I have uh, wanted to get this in the mail and I was so excited when it came that I wanted to jump right on it and get started because before you know it... Uh, festivities begin in the uh with easter and everything and then you lose track of time and we all know how that goes all right so i'm just hiding again my little straw in there no rhyme or reason to who goes first but um i know that this is going to go inside the wheel but i'm pretty sure it can oh looks like i grabbed some pencils too i didn't mean to do that I'm pretty sure that this is okay to be closed off because it's going to be glued on to the next piece anyway. Okay. But with this being a bit of the foundation, I think it'll be worth the extra little uh, effort there. And please pardon the appearance of my hands and my glue gun and the, all the rest of it, but I've been crafting and today is not a day for uh, vanity. Okay, so there's that and I'm going to just go ahead and do these this portion because that's going to be much easier to do as it's flat. And I think this is going to be, of course, the little wheelbarrow portion. Now, of course, this is going to have the interior portion of this and for that i can just go ahead and apply the dry adhesive and then it'll have the exterior portion which is i think going to be the more visible part of this and depending of course on how we fill it in my case i think i may just do flowers which i'm not going to do in this live uh, because that would take forever and a day but i will go ahead and make some of the larger ones um, and I'm not going to remove this just yet because I'm just telling myself that I'm going to line this. However, I think I did the lining in... Did I do two different colors? No, it's looking like I only did one. Huh, I'm surprised by that. Okay, so we can do the lining with this. But I did go ahead and cut using this gorgeous paper that I just love. Uh, and it's the same one that I use on the beehive here as a layer because it's got that rose gold um, kind of, uh, uh, not an overlay, but it's just, it's part of the paper. And if you see here, I did use double-sided adhesive. So um, I can leave it as such, or I can remove bits and pieces of it. So that way uh, a lot of it remains in here, um, which I think is what I'm going to do. Let's see here. And I might cut it again. 
to do some inlay but I'm just gonna no see I'm not gonna be able to do that actually so hey guess what we're going with this we're not doing the layer we're just gonna go straight up with this because that adhesive is so strong it's not going to let me pull away so what I will do is only do this color on the outside and then do that lighter color on the inside and I'm missing a couple of little um, diamonds, but that's okay because I can always cut it again. So here I'm missing a couple, but that's all right. I'll just cut, use this paper and cut again what I'm lacking there and then place it right back in there. And now I'll do this on the inside. So for this, I'm just going to use my regular Nouveau. One thing I try to keep in mind is to always be prepared to adapt. <laughs> adapt, adapt, adapt. I'm going to fold this and I'm going to close this off first because I want to hide that little seam with that piece of paper. So I'm going to go in and just meet my little edges there first. Create my little basket, if you will, for the wheelbarrow. Join these little edges also. Now normally I'm much more meticulous when I do my crafting, especially if there's little portions like this. Uh, so in a minute I can show you what I mean by that. However, there we go. I like it when I can hide a seam if ever possible. That's why I chose to do that now back there. And these pieces are pretty straightforward so I'm not going to worry too much about how they lay inside here because it's just following the same shape. And of course you're going to try to make it as straight as possible so it looks pretty both on the inside and the outside. Beverly, where is everyone? <laughs> I don't think I've ever had only two people watch one of my live videos. This is, this is just, you know, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're all out shoveling snow. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got that little portion. Super duper easy. I'm going to set that aside and let that dry while I try to figure out the wheel portion of this. Because I think this is going to be the more... Um, interesting is what I'm going to call it. it says wrap the first of your wheel strip die cuts around the circumference of one of your wheel die cuts so I only need one and then I'm supposed to wrap this all around the outside according to this so I am going to follow instructions for once <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just do this little tab situation here it does say that I needed two, so let's see what happens here. Okay, so obviously these are going to meet here. And then I think that's what I want to do first to create my circle. Let's see if that works. And if not, I can always cut another one. But let's meet our little circle first. And of course I could have used a uh, hot glue for that, but I don't like to add dimension unless it's absolutely necessary on objects that are 3D. And I hope that makes sense. But uh, because hot glue is silicone based, if I put it on something that's meeting a seam, it's going to create a little bump and I don't particularly care for that. So that's why I think it's well worth to go ahead and use the new glue because as you can see, it didn't take very long to dry. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the little wheel in there like so. So first, and I hope you guys can see this, I'm just going to apply a little dot of glue on each little one of those little tabs. They look like little teeth, <laughs> little monster teeth. 
Um, and then I'm going to take the pretty side and face it down and just push that in like so. And now I'm, it's just a matter of pressing the little tabs to make sure they don't move. So I'm using this pinching motion like that and going around in a circle. And you might have to hold it a second because it is liquid glue, but it dries rather quickly. So there's five people. Oh, okay. All right. So I have some silent ones. No worries. <laughs> I do appreciate it. So if you enjoy 3D makes, please feel free to leave me a thumbs up. Um, I try to explain step by step just for the viewers who may be new. Uh, I do have um, viewers on my channel that are not English speakers also. And so I find that just taking that little extra time is sometimes helpful. Um, I know that when I was learning English as a second language, it, it was beneficial to me as well. So here you see, of course, there's three wheels that you can cut according to the instructions. So now because this one will layer right on top, it's going to hide that icky bit there. And I'm going to look here. It says to repeat it with the second wheel strip. So, all right, let's just do what it tells us to do. <laughs> I'm so like eager to continue on that I don't always follow every step of the instructions, but I'm going to try to be good today. I'm going to repeat this again and be patient. Hold my little circle. Yes, six is good. <laughs> Say hello if you're new. <laughs> Or even if you're not new, if you're at work and you're playing hooky and watching, just leave a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, you don't have to type anything so you don't get yourself in any trouble. So we know how that goes. I know there, there are ladies that watch while they're at work. Uh, so they must have like an extra tab open on their computer with YouTube going on in the background. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Just flip this little guy over. I'm going to hold it gently and apply my little dots. Then pretty side down. I'm going to repeat that as well. And what I will do is off camera, I will just go ahead and uh, more than likely add another little uh wheel because as per instructions it it's said to only cut out three but i should have cut out four as i like everything to be really nice and finished i'm going to be very gentle here aiming toward the center there and if you do get any glue on this black paper you don't have to be too concerned because it will dry clear not that you want to go crazy or anything, but it gives you peace of mind, of course. But it's it's not going to ruin your project, per se. Make sure that there's contact. And I was looking at this set also, already thinking of how useful it'll be for other types of projects. So um, I think it's going to be really nice for card making. Uh, for instance, if you need to make a masculine card, you can use this, this particular wheel die cut and cut that several times, uh, whether it be all in one color and make a monochromatic card or in several different colors. And I think that would look super cool. Okay. I've got my little pressure there. And this one's not as cute as the other one. So I think this is the one that I'm going to go ahead and cover up not waiting on that <laughs> so just a couple little dots there i'm going to also use some for the very center and then sandwich this right on top being careful to match it up and then just applying pressure where i need to Oh, 
Et voila. Okay. I think that's pretty, pretty cool. So now I'm supposed to match these two guys. So slide the two constructed wheel halves together and adhere. Finally, take your last wheel die cut and glue it over your first. Well, I did that step first as I wasn't patient enough to wait. But this is supposed to slide in here. Now, I wish I had read this sooner because one of them is supposed to be slightly smaller than the other by, I would say, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, if that. I don't think that's going to happen here because I did not, did not, did not make them um, one tighter than the other. So, yeah, yeah, I didn't do that right. <laughs> you live and you learn. Okay, let's do that again. You live and you learn. Should have read the instructions. The good thing is that we have more paper. <laughs> Am I good at reading instructions? No. Do I follow instructions? No. <laughs> Do I learn as I go? Yes. That's one good thing. All right. Let's do that again. As I said before, learn what not to do. I'm going to cut that out once more. This one will fit right here, so that's going to be quick and easy. Oh, <laughs> no, it's okay. I should have read the instructions. I was multitasking, and that's, that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> because I was hustling to get all my pieces cut to get um to get the video started so yeah that's what i get for rushing that's all right i'm not worried that's not the first time i've done something like that won't be the last now pardon the noise for one second because i do have to use my bigger plate to cut out this longer piece and that's just going to take one moment. I have this magnetic plate, so that's helpful. And it's just a nice little strip here, so that'll just take one second. Well, that'll be, you know... Okay. It's kind of interesting because I did the shoes. This is reminding me of the little shoes and I did the same thing. I, I did all the tabs on the inside, I think it was, of the shoe. And then I read the instructions and it said to do it on the outside. And I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe that's why it didn't look quite right. <laughs> my, little, my little heels were looking like, you know, oh. I don't know. I laugh at myself all the time, so I have a very self-deprecating sense of humor, and I can come up with five different jokes of, you know, <laughs> what's happening. So I don't mind it, because I just, you know, in my head, I'm just laughing anyway. Like, hello? Okay, so let's do it again. <laughs> uh, all right, this is going to be a little bit tighter, so because we're aiming toward the inside let me put this here so that way there's a background because i'm realizing this is black on black and i do apologize if it was not visible all right i'm going to fold over my little tabs and because this is going to go toward the inside now and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to catch that my response to that is to just do the double-sided adhesive because if not, I'll drive myself batty. And you could do an eighth of an inch adhesive. I just have this on the table, so that's why I'm grabbing it. If you have a thinner one, of course, you want to use it. Um, and, of course, liquid glue will work. I just don't want to keep everyone here forever and a day. 
So I'm just going to now remove the backing on this. Aha, uh -huh. okay, now I'm going to apply this piece first, aiming toward that edge. And I think it might be easier if I do it from this direction. Yep, so I'm aiming toward the edge, but of course applying this on the inside. And mathematically it makes sense to do it like this, so... If I had used my deductive reasoning, then I would have gotten there, but it's one thing to do this when you're not filming, and it's a whole other, you know, situation when you're doing a live video. Okay. All right, so now this is going to join, and I have the kind of the little leeway to make that a little bit tighter than I had before. Um, so that's where that makes sense. Okay. All right. Now, before that dries, I'm going to try to feed it in here now. And I might smush it a little. Why do I have two? I don't know. Uh, okay, come on, get in there. Or I think this was the smaller. Hey, you know what? <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I did it. I'm so happy. And I don't want to fiddle with it too much. It just so happens that it actually matched the other side too. And that was completely coincidental. <laughs> and there it shall stay because I'm not going to mess with it. Oh, phew. Okay, I can breathe now, and I can also place this little bar through here as it um, instructs to do. So we're getting there. We're getting there. And now place the main base and glue onto the two large bars. But the first, first you have to glue the bars on either side. So I think we're going to revisit my little glue gun. I think I needed some more adhesive here, though. Okay, here we go. I'm going to apply some pressure there. Make sure that's nice and flat. There we go. And now I'm going to apply my little bars here. Now, what's really wonderful about this set that I was looking at is that it will have some reinforcement by way of these little decorative pieces. So, even though you want to be nice and clean when you're crafting, if it just so happens you get a tiny little bit of a smudge there, right? You don't have to punish yourself for it because you can always cover it up with an embellishment or something really pretty. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is try to make sure that this is nice and perpendicular. And again, practicing a little bit of patience. So let me look at the chat here. Da, 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 da. Yes. So yeah, lesson learned with the <laughs> with the tabs. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, try to make a mental note of that. This is so cute. Super, super cute. Okay. And once I think that this is dry enough, I'm going to continue on with the other side. And here's my little guy. Applying pressure there as well. And... There we go. I'm going to be gentle with it, but I think what I'm going to do is, as I had mentioned with the reinforcement, is that I am going to use hot glue for that little decorative portion because I don't want this to fall apart on me. Um, and I am referring to these little pieces here. So I'm going to uh, make sure that I use that to my advantage for this. Yep. 
I think that's how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to apply the adhesive, uh, I guess, on the edge here. And the other uh, nice thing about this, and I'm just thinking of this right now, of course, it's my first time using this, is that the angle of this little piece of paper is exactly the angle that you want to keep these bars at. So thank you, Tonic Studios, for making math easy. <laughs> Because 90 degree angles are not always our forte. Don't move on me. Kind of have to move fast here, but there we go. All right. One's a little bit uh, farther back than the other, but that's okay. Now that's going nowhere. All right. And the next little piece here is to attach this little guy here. Now, of course, there are people who have placed the basket, let me put some pressure, this way. There are people who have, or I'm sorry, this way. <laughs> there are people who have placed it in the other direction. And I think that's how I'm going to do mine. But I don't think there's a wrong way. So I'm just gonna apply my little adhesive here on the bottom. And places, uh, I would say, rather close to those other decorative pieces there. So I'm really happy that I placed those there first as well. And I'm wondering if I should have done hot glue here is also. Mm, I may have to supplement with that, yeah. Because, I'm going to be honest with you guys, it's rather cold in this room. And I'm thinking that today this uh, is not going to be too responsive, uh, meaning the the uh, liquid glue. So I'm just going to be very careful here. I'm left-handed, so I do everything backwards. So I do apologize if it seems crazy. All right. So I'm just going to do that there just to keep it stabilize and then I'm going to repeat it on the other side and aim for the same little angle there. There we go. Apply my little pressure gently. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's a little, oops, uh, yeah, see, temperature. <laughs> it got cold so quickly. All right, come on. You might have to do it more than once. This is amazing. And that's with the fireplace going. Okay, so there's that. Okay, now we need our little back piece here, which it did say to do it twice. So I'm going to take a peek here. And I'm guessing that's to reinforce it because it says to cut away the two side piece or outer pieces here so it says place and glue the wheelbarrow feet to the two large bars and take your second wheelbarrow feet die cut and trim as shown below place cuts and glue over the wheelbarrow feet okay let's do that so I'm, going to, I'm supposed to cut here and here also. Okay. This side gets um, put away, or piece, I should say. Then this one does have that little fold line exactly where I just cut, taking away the little pieces we don't need. So I'm just going to gently fold there also, just like that. And this is going to be the back portion of this. So I'm just going to measure twice, cut once, you know what I mean? Let me take a look at this. <clears throat> oh, it says I could even use florist wire to reinforce this. Oh, I didn't get that out. Well, 
what I'm going to do is just go ahead and glue it and see how it works. It's going to fit right here, kind of nestled in there. But I do see why it does um, suggest the floral wire because this is quite thin compared to the weight of this. Um, but let's let's keep it moving. I'm going to apply just a tiny bit of glue here. And what I'm going to do is aim here first to try to make sure that this is nice and straight. And of course, leaving room for this to fold over. Now I'm going to meet it back on the other edge or other side. And I think that's the easiest way that I can go about it. And now I'm going to do the same thing here. And fold that right over. Like that. Okay. It's working. It's working. Ooh la la. <laughs> I like it. Okay. And I'm going to use this, of course, as it said, to reinforce. Now, if I had studied this, because again, I didn't read any of this. I'm doing it as I um, construct it. I would have cut just this portion out of nice um, heavy weight uh, or the heaviest weight chipboard that I could um, put through my machine and then use that as reinforcement sandwiched in between there. Uh, so that, that's another option. I'm going to just do this for now because I can always make more and I will. Of course, it's a good good way to learn. Let's just do it. There's that. And the rest of this is merely decorative. Now, what I did is, of course, to go ahead and cut some of the little flowers and that sort of thing. Um, there's the little sign, which I need the rest of it, but it's so cute. I love that. Um, and it has an option, just going over here in my, my little die set. Um, it has the option here, of course, to add all sorts of foliage, depending on how you want to go about it. I already forgot where this goes, so. <laughs> but um, I went ahead and grab the little flowers and cut those out which is what I was doing at the beginning of this video it does have the pumpkin it has a sunflower it has uh, fall leaves and then just leaves that you can use all year round and the as far as the signs it has the hello autumn and hello spring I'm gonna go with the hello spring but I'm gonna cut this again kind of aiming toward just that little rectangle with my little um, die that's going to deboss the sentiment. And I'm going to use a piece of this cardstock, um, which is this kind of creamy color, just because I want to be able to see it. And of course I can add color to this, me and my left-handed cutting. <laughs> I'm never capable. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to do that one. And I'm going to use my tiny little machine here because it just makes sense. It's going to fit. And I'm first going to go in with this. Then I'll do the other portion so that I don't um, have my dies competing for space there because I don't want to ruin them. I learned that the hard way. Um, And I'm going to take away the little 
handle portion here. So I won't need it. In fact, I can even go around this and just cut it away a tiny bit on the edges all the way around because it's going to fit inside of that and this is you know completely optional of course all right i want it to nestle right in here which is why i'm doing it and now i'm going to go back with this other little portion and I think I'm going to go this way. Yep. And for that, you can use some washi tape to hold it down. So I'll just do it like that. Grab my little piece here. And this leaves a little imprint on that. Which I can highlight. And the way that I'm going to do it is to grab some um, gold colored. It's called, uh, yes, Gold Embellishment Mousse. <laughs> Sorry for the silent moment there. Just wanted to make sure that I didn't call it something that it's not. And I think I'm going to use a scrap piece of paper here. And again, this is all because of the color palette that I wanted to go with. Um, And that's just going to leave that little sheen on that, but it's also going to highlight a tiny bit of that. I'm going to place that there. And in fact, I think I'm going to take my micron and just go around the little letters as well. And... This is just going to, I can follow that little indentation that it left behind. And if it's out a little bit, it's just, I'm going to call it rustic. Because otherwise, um, I'm kind of botching this, but <laughs> I can't see if I don't get close enough. And I can't get close enough because the camera's in the way. Um but I'm going to eyeball that and call it, call it close to what it might look like. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to go ahead and I don't want it to look like a ransom letter. <laughs> so I'm going to go back and try to help it along a little bit and just do some little, um, decorative dots here and there. There we go. <laughs> that poor little E. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Okay. I'm going to, let's see here. I'm going to go in a little bit more and put a piece of paper here because I do see a glare and I apologize that I had not noticed that. Um, hopefully, can I put it there? This is what the sign looks like now, and I hope you guys can see that. Um, I have a lag on my video, so yeah, I think you guys were able to see that. <laughs> it's much prettier than my handwriting, I can guarantee you that. Okay, um, I have the sprigs that I had cut out. I mentioned that. So what I'm going to do is decorate the side here that I had mentioned was missing a few bits. I'm going to lay this on its side, and then I had cut some of the little flowers. Woohoo! They're kind of flying everywhere now. But, of course, now is the fun part where you can decorate as you like. And you don't have to use um, 
only what's available in this die set, of course. You can then incorporate anything else that you have, um, which I think makes it very interesting and fun. But I hope that... Well, actually, that didn't cut through, and I, I think it's because I had doubled that up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start with the little sign here. And it's looking very monochromatic so far. So what I'll do to break up that look is that then everything else that I add on top of it, I'm going to try to make contrast with. One of the things that you can do, of course, is like I just mentioned that gold mousse. You can add other colors as well. Um, and I happen to have the newer color, this green here. And this is called um, spring green. And it's a, not necessarily a, a newer color, but I just happen to get it. So I can go ahead and grab some of that and make use of it by applying some of that mousse to what I cut out. And even though I cut it out in this uh, beige color, I can now transform that a bit and also have that beautiful pearlescent look, which I think is absolutely stunning. And you can do both sides of the paper or do one side, however you find it's going to look best. And then, I, of course, you can do the same with the flowers and color them in whichever color you like. Um, so I'm going to do a few of these. And I think these I'll leave as they are. But such a pretty color. Then the flowers, I think, I will probably add Nouveau drops to. So I'm going to start off by adding the largest one of these here in the background. As I said, to kind of break this visual of everything one color. Oh, no worries. Thank you for coming back. I think I was here on my own for a bit. <laughs> like I said, this this is the one day that everyone decided not to stop in. But if people rewatch the video and get anything out of it, then that's okay. Okay. I love these sprigs. I am a lover of all things leaves and flowers, so this is right up my alley. The more the better. And I'm only going to do one side, but of course you can go to town doing all of it. Um, there we are. I'm just going to layer these first because after I do that then I'm going to go in with the flowers and I like this teal blue um, because of course in nature you get to see so many different colors in light um, and I think it creates a really pretty backdrop to other lighter colors so I'm just gonna this is how I typically craft I just try to layer I'm kind of um, squeezing the little flowers because they're, they are so very tiny. Try to layer these and then go in with uh, my glue and my tweezers and then I'll be able to um, permanently place them down. So kind of like playing, playing with the layout if you will. Now I can layer, of course, these flowers. It doesn't have to be all one color or one layer. So I'm going to do that as well. 
but just creating my little groupings here and there. And these are so pretty. What a what an adorable little set. I mean, really. I can go ahead and place that there. And I've got a bunch of them here. Uh, I don't think you guys can see them, no, because I zoomed in. But I wanted to zoom in the video so that you get you get to see how delicate all of this is because it really is quite small. Um, so let's start applying glue. And that way this can be finished off. And of course you can apply glue to the surface or to the flower, whichever way is best for you. Sometimes I have to apply a tiny bit of pressure. And of course I'm doing it much faster than I would if I was off camera, but either way it works. So now I know I'm aiming here. It's kind of a lazy way to go about it, but <laughs> I think it's going to work. Aiming to that little center area. I've got a little glue here and there. Apply my little flowers and then I'll go into the second layer. There's that. Come on now. Woohoo! All right. And I'll do the same here. What did you have to eat, Beverly? What's good these days in your menu? <laughs> What's on the menu at Beverly's house these days? I want to know. I'm curious. Lay, layer this one on top. Now, if you're wondering why I went with this color palette, it's because it's going to match the other items that I already made. Um, I was mentioning that at the beginning of this video. I wanted to match what I'm going to be placing in my living room. And I love adding these pieces to my home decor because then I can really make it personalized. Waffles! Ooh! That sounds yummy. Do you make them like southern style? Like waffles and, uh, what is it? Waffles and, um... You know how um, they make them savory down south? Is that how you do them, Beverly? Which I didn't even know that was a thing. I lived in Kentucky as a child and I had no idea about so many things because, of course, you know, military life. Um, not the same as civilian life. I think I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. I'll layer that one on top. So, because what I was trying to create here was a backdrop of the, um, the more like intense colors. So that way when you put the yellow on top, it really helps it pop. In case you were wondering, why on earth would she combine these particular colors? That's the reason why. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, <laughs> the frozen kind. Belgian, is that it? The Belgian style? Those are great. I like to uh, make um, a blueberry sauce. But... These days I'm not eating too much of that just to curb the sugar. Um, I have to be really, really careful about that. Thanks to my wonderful 
genetics <laughs> to be really you know really mindful of how much sugar I allow myself to have um, and that could be you know it doesn't have to be sugar in the form of sweets it can just be any kind of sugar any carbs you have to be super careful with um, okay I'm as you can see here, there, I mean, there are options here to keep layering and layering and layering, which for me, this is the part that I enjoy. Um, but I'm going to, I think, reserve the rest of those for the other side. And what I'm going to do now is use a little bit of glitter for the centers. That's what I did with this adorable little set here. Is that I went ahead and just dotted little bits of glue and then added my glitter um, so to make it cohesive of course I'm going to follow the same principle and I'm going to grab another piece of paper here and I'm sorry if I was out of frame there Can I add? you know you have to have your little area to catch the glitter when you're going to play with it. So what I'll do is I'm going to grab this gorgeous color. It's called Sunny Side. And I got this not too long ago. And it is just such a happy color. I love it. Um even though you could use this for fall, and I think it may have come out with one of the fall collections. I can't recall now. I just thought that that was such a stunning color. So I'm doing little dollops of glue here. Right in the center of all those flowers. That's how they're all going to come together. And then... Hi, Carolyn. It came... The tiny little flowers came with the wheelbarrow set. And, and um, as a matter of fact, okay, so when I purchased this set, because <laughs> it was so early, I was chatting with Joanna. And Joanna's, um, she's in, um, yeah, she's in England, if I'm not mistaken. She's in England. So Joanna said, hey, Raquel, I got the set. <laughs> Such enablers that we are to each other. Um so I went on the U.S. site, and lo and behold, it was already live, meaning, you know, you could purchase it. But it wasn't bundled yet for some reason. So I am going to be reaching out to Tonic to get the rest of it because there's a second little set, and I believe it only has, I don't know if it's six dies or, or four, but it comes with the ones that you can make the little rolled flowers with, which I would have loved to have... Um, but because I jumped the gun and I got the set, I it, I didn't get that second one. However, all of these tiny little flowers, let me show you the set. They came, <clears throat> they came with, with this die set. So pardon the, the appearance because of course I've been cutting. Um, let me see if I can show it to you. I'm going to set it right in here as it came. Um, and hopefully, you know what, let me zoom out right quick. I'm letting that glue dry for two seconds, by the way. I, I do know that it's drying. <laughs> but I'm going to take advantage of the, the moment to show Carolyn here. Okay. Can you see this? And I apologize, I do have a lag in my video, but... Down here, let me move that out of the way, there's four little strips here, which I love it when they do this. So that way you can, let me zoom in a tiny bit, you can do all your flowers at once. And that's what I was doing. Oh, 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 sorry about that. <laughs> I just bumped into the camera. That's what I was doing earlier, was just taking those strips and uh, I just, I had to step on a stool so I can see the camera, guys. I'm so little, I can't even reach. So sorry for bumping into it. But you see that? And I hope you guys can see. Oh, 
here we go okay there we are yes the uh the leaves are adorable and that's going to be that's what i was saying earlier when i started was that it's going to be wonderful for making cards um because if you like those delicate little cards and it does have a little sunflower also then it's perfect for that <clears throat> and i'm sorry i bumped into the camera there okay so now my glue has had time to kind of settle there so I'm going to take one of my little spoons here that was gifted to me. This one happens to be gold, so I think it's, you know, makes sense to use it, right? <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of, as if I was adding salt to a dish, and I don't want to add too much. I'm just going to sprinkle this on top of each one of those little flowers. And it's going to allow me to have that nice little burst of color right in the center which when it's such a vibrant color, you might be afraid to use it, but if it's for the center of flowers, it just adds that happy little touch. Sound like Bob Ross, but it's true. Just makes it happy. And then I'm going to tap away the excess onto my little piece of paper that I was prepared with. And you can even take a dry, once this is dry, I'm not gonna do it right now, but once it's nice and dry, I can take another little brush and just brush away the excess. And there's my little adorable little cluster of flowers with the shine in the center and all of it. And I can go back now. Oopsie, I have a little, I have a little flower trapped in there. But actually, I kind of think that looks really cute. That just gave me an idea. Hmm. Now I know what I'm going to do for a future one. Thank you, little flower. This gave me an idea. Okay, so there it is. The little wheel turns. It's got the adorable little, you know, area here in the front that's decorative. And of course, I had applied the hot glue. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to flip it over and do the same thing on the bottom because I want this to be nice and sturdy. And the directions don't say that you have to do that, but I think it goes without saying that sometimes when you're creating a 3D object, you have to look at the elements and see what makes sense. Um, it, um, it advised that you might want to use the floral wire back here and all that good stuff, but you know which materials you have at home and how you can adapt. So um, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to cover up those yucky little seams with these pieces that I had cut out. And these are not as decorative as the ones on the top, but that's okay. Because they're just serving a purpose of, you know, adding that bit of um, support. That's the word I couldn't think of, so sorry, I just blanked there for a second. Apoyo, support. Sometimes my Spanglish wants to kick in. Okay, there we go. Voila. All right. Oh, but I think it's so cute. And of course, you can add in there all the goodies you want, if that's what you're going to do with it. But I'm quite happy with the set. I think it's adorable and oh thank you so much thank you Leo for taking the time to stop by everyone if you could say hi to Leo she's part of the tonic studios team and I am so very honored that she would take the time to stop by and say hi and be supportive because of course we all know if you have stopped by my channel before, all of you ladies that are here today, you know Carolyn, Beverly, and the ones who were here earlier who may have not been able to say hi, you know how much I love this product and how inspired I get whenever I see something on the site and then I, of course, want to jump on it. And, you know, I, if only, <laughs> if only I could do that every single week, but when i do get an item i thoroughly enjoy it and i share it with friends and family um and you know 
uh, try to also incorporate it, as I said before, into my home decor. So this is right up my alley. And now you see why I went ahead and added those colors. And of course I stuck my finger in it, but I wouldn't be me if I hadn't done that. Um, now I also have on the side here, which before I forget, I have the little bee that's going to be visiting this little garden as well. And this is from the, the beehive set, of course, this one here. And I did what Leo shared in her tutorial, which was to sandwich the, um, the little bee. This is, I'll do it right now, in fact, to show that you can sandwich the little bees together with the little yellow center. So that way the little wings can be popped up. I thought that was such a great idea. So because I'm going to add this as part of the um, the way to decorate this, I'm just going to add a little drop of glue there in the center of the body and then add the second little B. And it's going to face the same direction, but the little tail, you got to make sure the little tail matches too. And that's the more fiddly part of this is my friend would say the faffing. <laughs> Oh gosh, I love that word. Okay, now I can go ahead and separate the little wings and add it there. And of course, this is a very simple version. As I said before, it's super simple because it's my first time using it. But now that I know which direction I can take with it, and I'm going to add this right here. There we go. Now that I know which direction I can take with it, then of course I can go crazy because it was super fast to cut out. That's one thing I wanted to mention. Um, because I said this morning that I was going to do this live video. And in less than 20 minutes, I had everything cut out. Hello, Charlene. Welcome. No worries. No worries. Better late than never. And I totally get it. I, I came on early and I wish I had uh, waited. But I have, you know, some things to catch up on today. Um, this has been quite a busy week. The kids were out of school this week, so um, there was a lot that I was unable to do. But today, Friday, I was like, you know what? Today I'm going to craft. Finally! <laughs> Alright, I went ahead and fixed that little flower before I forget. But again, I'm going to do a, just kind of a recap here. This is called Sunnyside Glitter. If you if you are not a huge fan of glitter and you only get glitter every once in a while, then my suggestion is get one that makes a difference in your project, whether it be with texture. And let me show you what I mean by that. Um, not all glitters are created equal. If you know that, you know, Tonic Studios has some really interesting supplies. Uh, this glitter here is called Brown Flakes. And let me show you. That's exactly what it looks like. It's it's like tinsel, if you guys recall tinsel from back in the day. Um, super cool stuff. So if you're only going to have one little bit of it on a project, then I would say grab the texture or the color that really pops because it's going to make a difference. Um, on this beehive box, on the little seams here, which can be unsightly because sometimes they look like a gap in your project. And I'm not saying that that's always the case. I think it depends on what papers you're using, etc. But um, if you don't know this about bees, they do seal their own boxes. And that uh, substance that they add uh, works like an almost like super glue on their boxes, uh, which is a wonderful substance. It's actually also edible and very good for you. But I was thinking about that. So I went ahead and added my adhesive along the edge. And then I added glitter right there. Kind of to represent that. And that's just a little personal thing. But uh, from a visual standpoint, I think it adds just a tiny little bit of glimmer there. Um, and it's those little details that I absolutely love. Um, because it does make it stand apart. If you look at it from far away... You're just seeing a little hint of glimmer. And then, of course, when you see it up close, you see why. Um, but it's just so super adorable. I think they play very well together. 
And then today, uh, just to let you know, um, Charlene, who just got here late, um, then the I went ahead and made the little wheelbarrow purposely with the same color palette because I'm going to be using these to decorate. And that's why I went with, um, you know, those colors and all that good stuff. But I highly recommend all the product. I think it's so very well made. And then the, I still have little flowers here left over. As you can see, I'm going to take this out of the way before I end up wearing it. Um, but you can do so much with them. And I'm just picturing this um, for a wedding or for just a thank you gift. If you don't have uh, a very large gift to give someone, it doesn't matter so long as the presentation is beautiful. You can add little chocolates in here. Of course, people are al already thinking about um, Easter, which is a time where a lot of people do gift um, each other chocolates and that sort of thing. Then you can use it for that or just spring birthday, etc., etc. But this has been a lot of fun. I hope you guys do like it. Another product that I use in the video, if you want to rewatch it, was the embellishment mousse from Nouveau. And that was on the little leaves. It gave it that pearlescent finish that I think is so very delicate and lovely. So those leaves started off as a uh, just cream color base. And now it has the green, which is a nice light green. But it also has that pearlescent touch to it, which is subtle, but it's so very elegant, I think. Um, and I'm so sorry that I botched the E. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm probably gonna layer another one on top of that so you know that's how it goes but yeah if you guys have any questions let me know I'm going to also be creating with uh, well I have a mini album that I have to finish and I'm thinking of filming that but I'm not a hundred percent sure it is going to be a tonic studios one so I probably will just because it's a shape I haven't shared online before um in fact i'm trying to think of what the name of it is and it's right here yep here it is so i'm currently working with this set here let me set this aside and this one came out of huh, goodness i think it's now I don't remember if it's a year old already now, but this is called the Eternal Moments Complete My Memory Book Die Set. It's absolutely stunning. Um, I just had not gone online to share anything that I had made with it. So I'm, I've already got all the pieces cut out and everything. So if I film it, then I'll go ahead and share that, uh, which I think would be a good idea. Um, oh, you're very welcome. And thank you, Leo. I hope you have a beautiful weekend. Uh, and thanks again so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> it, very, it means a lot to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And then after that, or somewhere sandwiched in between, <laughs> I shared a haul video earlier, which is uh, these items here. There's uh, the Delightful Decadence Hexagon gift box. And then also the uh, treat yourself gift gift box. I think this was going to be really easy. So I don't know if I'm going to do that one first or not. But you guys can let me know which one you'd rather I share. Hi, Allison. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Here's what I made, Allison. <laughs> this is what I just finished in this video. And uh, you probably were able to see it as well, but I'm not sure. I am so very thrilled with these pieces. I think they're gorgeous. Uh, my husband was super happy that I got the bee, um, the beehive set. He said, oh, I think that's the best one yet. <laughs> so, you know, he's supportive of my crafty ventures. And uh, uh, I'm going to continue on with that, of course, because, as I said earlier, I'm making a more mixed media one. And then that one already has one of our honey jars in it because that was what I wanted to figure out. Can I fit one in here? But I, I will be sharing um, a different version because I ordered smaller jars to fit our honey. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, this one's just, I'm going to go to town with the 
uh, with different colors. Um, I happen to have that paper, but I already added some golden um, embellishment mousse and I'm not done yet. So when that's done, I'll go ahead and share it in the group as well. Um, just in case anyone wants to see it, but yeah. Uh, it's all fun and it's all just oh, so cool. I don't know. <laughs> I think Tonic Studios just has really opened up my mind to so many different types of crafts that I hadn't done before. The mini albums are always going to be my favorite, I think. But to be able to even incorporate the other items into those mini albums, including, you know, the tiny little flowers for details from the one set or the panels from another set, you know, it's just so amazing. And um, yeah, so I truly appreciate it. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Because I know I've kept you guys here for a very long time. If not, then I do appreciate you stopping by. Um, I will be back with my next video very, very soon. And as I always say, I hope that you can be inspired and be blessed. And I thank you so much for watching. Don't forget that you can definitely use links if you'd like to. Or reach out to me at paintsandglitter at gmail.com. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. Ciao, ciao.